Hi, and in this tutorial I would like to demonstrate some creative ways to work with masks using graphic stencils. In this painting project we're going to begin by selecting File and New and going ahead and selecting the Painter Default which you'll find in the drop-down here, Painter Default. And the size is width 1600 by height 900 and we'll go ahead and keep the resolution at 150 ppi. The Protea flower comes in a wide variety of colors and shapes and is really perfect subject for our project here. I have saved my stencil in my image portfolio so I can use it time and time again for different projects. So to get started, what I've done here is I've selected my Protea and then duplicated it three times on the layer, each time using the layer adjuster to rotate, resize, and reposition the flower to a pleasing composition. To begin with, I'm going to close the visibility icons on two of the flowers and we're going to begin with the frontmost flower in the foreground area and we're going to start to develop this one and build the texture around it. To do that I'm going to go ahead and select the Protea layer and then I'm going to go ahead and think about what I want to do as far as um, texture. Now when it comes to layer masking there really is no limit to the, to the um, options that you have for creating uh, really interesting uh, textural effects uh, within your selections. In this case, what I'm going to do is add a Citrusolve selection uh, background pattern, which um, I think will um, contribute to more of the tropical feel of the Protea flower. So to do that, I'll choose File and the option Place. And I'm going to go to my Texture folder, and we're going to choose this beautiful texture and we're going to go ahead and uh, select and OK. And when I select the image, the uh, layer adjuster is already active, so I have that opportunity to kind of place that texture where I need it to be. And in this case, um, I'm not concerned about filling the entire canvas because I only want this particular texture to apply to the uh, selection that I'm working on. So I'm going to right click and choose uh, Convert to Default Layer and now I have that image converted. And I'm just going to drag it down here and I really don't need this any longer so I'll go ahead and delete that. And with that said, um, what I want to do now is I want to create a layer mask. So to do that, I'm going to come down to on my Layers palette and choose the New Layer Mask option and select it. And you'll notice that the layer mask has been added. It's important when you're working on a layer mask to consider what side of the layer you're working on. So do make sure that you, when you're working on an active layer mask, that you're always working on the right side of that particular layer. To know that this layer is active, or this layer mask is active, you'll notice a black frame going around the layer uh, option here. So be sure that that's there. It's very easy to move over to this side from time to time, so be sure that you are working on the layer mask. Now on my color wheel I'm going to select the color black and it's important to note that when working with layer masks that black conceals and white reveals. So if we wanted to conceal what is underneath we're going to fill it with black. If we want to reveal what is 
uh, that texture, then we're going to paint with white. So in this case, we're going to choose black, and I'm going to use the Command F or Control F option in PC and select OK. And you can see now that our image is visible. We can actually see that protea flower, although the texture is now concealed from us. With that said, I'm going to come down to the protea and I'm going to right click on it and choose Select Layer Content. Now you can see now that the active selection around the protea is active and this way I can constrain what I bring in from my layer mask to that selection and that's exactly what I want to do here. I'm going to close the visibility icon on the protea flower so the selection is active and I'm going to go back to my layer mask and I'm going to start working with the square hard pastel and I have those brushes pulled out onto a custom palette so I can get to them uh, quite easily. Um, and the other option that you'll want to experiment here, uh, especially when you're working with chalks, uh, is to work with the grain setting and of course uh, paper paper textures. Now grain settings at about 12 percent are going to reveal lovely texture uh, within your work. So chalks, pastels are good choices for, for uh, you if you want to reveal this kind of texture within your work. So I'm going to select the metallic bubbles uh, paper texture and going back to my brush tool and choosing my variant square hard pastel I'm going to begin um, uh, painting in my protea flower. But in order to do that, I need to think about the color I'm using here. Now I know that black conceals, but I know that white reveals. So I'm going to bring my, uh, my tick, color tick up to the white or the lightest area, and then I can begin painting in to my protea flower. At any time I can work with my papers panel and uh, increase or decrease the scale of that paper. So if I wanted to actually reveal less or a smaller scale of that paper texture, I can do that. And please keep in mind that you can change paper textures at any point as well. So once I feel that I've captured the essence of what I'm looking for in the uh, protea flower, I'm going to go ahead now and um, right-click on the layer mask and apply the layer mask. And by doing so, uh, let's go ahead and update that layer. You can see now that I have that lovely protea uh, picking up that beautiful uh, texture that I created. Now there's one final thing that I'd like to do here. So what I'm going to do is add a new layer directly above my flower and I'm going to, with that selection still active I'm going to come over to my toolbar and select the selection adjuster and my real variable tip pen and I'm going to change the color to black and using the select, op select option I'm going to come down to stroke selection and stroke that selection a couple of times. Now by selecting control D or command D I can remove those marching ants and you can see that we end up with this beautiful outline around our selection and the image is really starting to come together now. At that point I can come down to my original protea that I started with and delete that because I no longer need to work with that. I can open up the protea, the next protea, and I can repeat the process. Only this time we'll go ahead and use a different texture to apply to this protea flower. 
For this flower, we'll work with the same Citrusolve uh, texture background, but we'll choose um, a different color. And we're going to work with kind of a green value this time. Again, we'll right-click and convert that to a default layer, and then simply repeat the process that we uh, worked on originally and go on to complete each additional of the three flowers. To stay organized, I'll go ahead and pull this texture down so it's positioned directly above the Protea flower that I'm going to be working on. And I'll go ahead and add that layer mask, fill that layer mask with black, select OK, come down to the layer, select the layer content, and then begin to paint into my layer mask. I'm going to close the visibility eye on the second Protea flower I'm working on now. Again, I'm going to pick up my real variable tip pen and with that selection active and painting with white, I'm going to go ahead and begin painting in the second Protea. I'm going to stick with that paper texture as well because I think it works pretty well for what I want to do here. Once I've applied the layer mask, I'll go again over to my selection adjuster and we'll go ahead and stroke that selection once again using the real variable tip pen working with black and choosing select stroke selection and we'll do that a couple of times. Command D or Control D to remove the marching ants and you can see that uh, we have that beautiful um, second Protea completely in the correct hierarchy feeling like it's in back of the front Protea and we can go on again to repeat that process with the final Protea. Now I've applied the effect to all three of the Protea flowers and the wonderful thing about working this way is the fact that each one of these flowers is on its own layer. So that gives us the opportunity at any point to move these layers around or move these uh, elements around to resize them, to change them, to flip them. Uh, numerous different uh, options that you have. So working with layers makes it very, very um, easy to get this done and to have so much flexibility uh, when you're working here. Uh, finally, the uh, one of the last things that I might do here is to select the layer one, which is the foreground protea. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and select the layer content by right clicking on it and then coming down to the dynamic plugins which is located on the layers palette I'm going to choose the burn option here and we're just going to go ahead and let that render One of the last options that I might want to play with here um, is to use one more filter which is in what we call the dynamic plugins.
filters which are located on the layers palette. I'm going to go ahead and select the layer 1 which is the protea which is in the uh, foreground of the uh, composition and I'm going to go to dynamic plugins and select the burn option here and we're just going to let this open up and render. I'll begin by set, setting the burn margin and in order for the image to reveal uh, some of the fine texture I'll want to play with the burn margin and normally uh, I tend to keep it at 1 or 0 percent and then I'll come down to the flame breadth and work with that until I find something that I feel uh, works well. And I want to retain that texture but I also want to play with some of the creative ways that you can work with uh, this particular option here. So I think what it's doing here is giving me more of that real tropical feel that I was uh, hoping to achieve. So I'll just continue to play with some of the uh, burn options here. I can also change the burn interior edges, the actual color, and so I may want to uh, work with that or experiment with that as well. I think I'm going to like this one so I'll go ahead and select it and we'll update that layer so it's showing the current uh, option and what I'd like to do now is do one final thing and that is to add a paper texture. So I'm going to come back to my image portfolio and noting that the image portfolio is a place where you can literally store anything from photos to stencils to selections to whatever. <laughs> uh, the possibilities are really endless. But I have a paper texture here called my perfect paper texture that I use quite often and it's one that um, I use so often that it made sense for me to add it to the image portfolio and to store it there and then apply it as I need it. So I'm going to double click on that and apply that texture and you'll notice that it's a little bit short so I'll go ahead and activate the transform tool and resize it to the point where it fills in my entire image and then we'll go ahead and commit that transformation and you can see now that we've applied a lovely kind of uh, watercolor effect. Now this one is set at 21 percent so if I did want to bring up the texture and make it a little bit more pronounced I could certainly do that by uh, working with the layer opacity and bringing it up. So once I find something that works well I'll just go ahead and stick with it and from that point on um, I feel my image is um, ready to go. I will probably do one more thing and that is to add my signature chop um, and I'll go ahead and double click to add that. I'm going to choose my selection adjuster and move it to the position that I feel works well within the composition and I think right about there and I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer and choose my square hard pastel and working with a red value going ahead and filling that in command D to remove the marching ants and there you go. So I think you'll have a lot of fun with this um, this particular tutorial. I think it opens up and expands the creativity within layer masks which are in my opinion one of the most powerful powerful tools to use in Painter.